Hatch 1.5 tier list right before Mr. Krabs comes out. I really wanted to go over whether or not I would have changed my mind a lot on these characters to see because there's a lot of things that came out in this patch 1.5 that changed a lot of things for a lot of characters. Not too much, but it gave enough for me to actually think about, especially with that Jimmy Neutron change in the patch 1.5 notes that I was like, hmm, people can no longer spam and, and stall with the same moves over and over again. So it might be a little bit different, plus some get up animations and everything were changed. So everybody's more standardized, like Reptar and Plankton not having a different get up animation than everybody else, which was quicker, which has made it harder to tech chase them. So now I'm gonna be doing a 1.5 tier list for you all to chime in on and comment down below if you like this or not, and to see if we're on the same page. Now, obviously these changes were not gigantic to the point where everybody is gonna be so, so different from the last tier list that I changed my mind that much, but I have been playing enough to make myself think about who I still think is good and who is not the best and who's great still. And I wanna start it out with a character that I feel like did get hit a little bit because of these changes was April. It's still gonna be S tier, but maybe at like the middle of S tier. She, as you guys know, is my main, but also the same point is that she got a down special change where she cannot spam it if she gets hit. So if she gets hit out of her down special or she gets hit at any point, she can just down special again, which is her ZSS jump. Her double jump essentially it doesn't have to be used because she always has another jump. But because of this change, she's gonna get hit. She'll probably be a little bit below the S ranks on everybody else, considering that that made her a huge change for her despite everybody else not having as much of a huge change. Now I will preface this next character I'm gonna talk about by saying they made her a little worse with her stalling, but in the same preface, you pretty much never wanted to use it more than once anyway, but she has bigger magnet hands. So I might be ready to say that Ember is at the bottom of A tier. Now, why do I say this? Well, they made it so her recovery is a little tiny bit better because she can snap to the ledge a little bit better because before you'd be right below the ledge, then you wouldn't snap, so you would just die. And they changed her charge mechanic where you can't stall with down charge anymore. You can't stall with down charge and you cannot stall with up charge anymore like multiple times So that means if you hit it once you can't use it again Which falls in line to what Gertie had and everything like that, which I think Gertie is actually still amazing by the way I think that Gertie is the reason why everybody else has these things that are going on because she only could ever use her charge attacks in the air to recover or otherwise one time. So I feel like they're bringing everybody else in line with that because everybody else kind of has that issue now, whereas before, not so much. Now, I will say that I also think a lot about a lot of characters and because you guys have already heard me talk about Gertie, I think she's just fast Captain Falcon and she's amazing in that regard. And I'm gonna keep talking about other characters that I think are great, but you guys should know still that the top three in this game, in no real order, is still going to be Garfield, it's still gonna be El Tigre, and it's still gonna be Gerald. If you didn't think Gerald was the best, I don't know what to tell you right now, but I still think he's amazing. He can camp. He can go in. He can do any type of play style he wants. He can really do what he wants. He can burst you. If he has got the lead, he can just run away forever. And it's really frustrating to play against. I really like him. That's why I've been playing him as a secondary. He's super fun and I really do enjoy him. But same thing as Garfield. Now that they fixed his sugar rush, we're going to see a lot more Garfields be able to come out into the meta because a lot of them were not able to play their main because of the fact that if you used your sugar rush, your down special, you automatically were stuck in it like the whole stock you were stuck in it so now that they fixed that it's probably not gonna be an issue anymore at all so i'm hoping to see more garfield because now he doesn't have to be limited people were saying oh cake assault fell off it's like dude cake assault wasn't allowed to use one whole move in a character's kit that makes him fast so like he was hindered so with this character no longer being hindered it's gonna be great to see him rush down and see how good he is and obviously el tigre he just has more bs behind a lot of his stuff like el tigre's got huge moves they barely gave him startup frames they barely gave him like lag they barely gave el Tigre difficulties, right? Before he was like a modded character in this game where he had no lag at all, which was insane. He's still really great and I don't think he's going to change anytime soon from the being the S plus tier in this game. Those three characters you're looking at right there are the best characters in the game in my opinion and I still think that they're really, really good. A character that I think has skyrocketed a tiny bit just because I've been playing them more and just because I've understood them more and obviously I've seen a lot of really big brain characters play this guy. This new change where Jimmy Neutron can air dodge out of his up special makes me think he's way better because out of the fact that a lot of characters can really just do that. They can have to usually cancel out of their move or they can just do a move like April can where she can just up special and then do a move and get out of her up special. With Jimmy, you were locked into that move. And they also kind of made his other move a little bit worse, but the same token, this is a great change to make him usable. I feel like he actually has an opportunity to be not only crazy because he has a lot of crazy moves, but he has the opportunity to actually do things that aren't just Goddard centric, you know? He's going to have things where he can actually follow up and not have to worry so much 
much about getting wrecked because he used his up special. If you use the up special, usually you're stuck in it. You either had to go to the ledge or you had to risk going to the sage, which was really hard because then you have to up special again and all you can do is go up with it or like sideways and it really wasn't that great. But the fact that you can air dodge out of it now is really nice and I, I like that they did that. I feel like that's what makes him better. Moving on to the fact that I still like Plankton, but I think he's probably better than I think he is, but they just keep nailing him, right? They keep making it harder for him to exist. They keep taking away things for like his recovery and things like that that make him essentially kind of harder to justify putting up higher. But I still think he's maybe bottom of A tier. It's just that I can't justify it with how much he's getting hit by things. And also they changed his get up animation, which was faster. Like him and Reptar were fast. And I really think that it was insane that they had a different animation that was faster than the rest of the cast. So I'm glad that they fixed that because now you can tech chase him properly without getting screwed up, which was my problem is April. I feel like every time I try to tech chase him, he would just normal get up and I couldn't do anything because it was hard to react to. But I will say he's probably A tier. I'm just kind of nervous. You're going to keep making him worse. He does have insanely good combos, which make him A, but to me, seeing him get nerfed over again makes him a B tier. Now with these new changes, I do think Zim is probably a little bit better than he's ever been. They did change Gur a little bit, and I do think that Gur being a little bit better or like having him move a little bit better with his special, I feel like has helped him a little bit. I still don't think he's the best in the game, obviously, but I think that he's good enough where like he and Plankton can still can compete and give everybody hell. It just depends if you're a specialist with him or not. You can't just pick him up and start playing him, but I do say that whenever you pick a character and you try to see how they fit, if you bond with them, that's great because every character on this playlist is viable. It's just that these are order within tiers that I have experienced through playing in tournaments and playing online. But I will say a character that didn't get touched was... Lucy and I still think Lucy's ridiculous now I don't know if she's S plus I do think she's S tier though I still think she's ridiculous by all means I've seen a lot of good Lucy's come out of the woodworks there's a lot of tech that we, we still don't know about there's slime shielding and other stuff but I haven't really even tried to investigate because I kind of don't care that much but I will say that it makes a difference whether or not you slime cancel or you slime dodge those things are very important to the meta and I feel like if you know a lot of the mechanics and these hidden techs that are in the game if you look up these videos you will definitely get improved as a player because I've seen Lucy's incorporate some of these tech but Lucy literally has something that it, nobody else has. She's got mix-ups that people can't see coming and she's got the three modes which makes her a really good character maybe better than Gertie but we'll see I just think that Gertie's ridiculous for her kill power and for her ability to run away forever whereas Lucy doesn't have a projectile she has to kind of run into you or coffin so it's kind of a little bit different but I still think she's really good. Now Jenny is becoming more and more of a real character to the point where they are all sort of getting up into the eight tier regardless of where i want to put them maybe we'll have to get rid of the c tier at some point because of the fact that every character is getting closer and closer to being a tier where everybody's already viable but within those viabilities there might be like a 0.5 difference between ratios and ratings on them and there might be a little bit of a difference between every character i do think that every character is starting to get up there if you play them a certain way now big hitboxes obviously like plankton and ember are really huge in this game and they're really nice to have but she and him are not that much far apart so it's going to be a little bit daunting to try to see in the future when they get more buffs and changes who is going to be the best but in the same token like big bodies kind of get bopped around right that's not the same for reptar reptar is stupid and i hate him i don't like reptar he doesn't have to use any slime mechanics but if he does use his slime cancels he's ridiculous there are a lot of good reptars randomly in the world that are just good with reptar because he can literally do whatever he wants and he can throw out whatever he wants and he can just pretty much ignore everybody we knew that he was broken when the game came out but he's still Still really strong even in this newest patch now we're not saying that oh this patch changed him that much it's more about me playing a lot of them and i hate how annoying he can be because he doesn't really have to invest any time into slime canceling he can kind of just throw you around and do whatever he can also just hold moves and hold positions for a long time without even thinking about it so he's definitely a really good character if you want to play a character that's kind of like a sort of grappler that is better than patrick reptar's huge moves they're probably gonna get toned down not gonna lie because people are probably gonna complain about him still because he is ridiculous but i will say for right now i think he started to join himself into the S tier and I think that that's probably where he belongs just because he can outrange and out damage a lot of characters and he can play a certain way where he can just hold positions and not really think with that said he is S tier to me obviously Danny Phantom still really good he's still up there in the S tier I think that April can beat him even though April did get screwed over a little bit he has mechanics and stuff that he kept over the time which now he's a little bit tiny bit worse now that he can't stall and do the same exact move over and over and over again and just wait for you to come down and keep throwing it out but at the same token 
is that they're going to do it anyway. It's not like it's taken away from much from them. They're still going to spam a lot of stuff. They're still going to be really annoying and run away a lot. I still think that it's true that they can really just play the game however they feel like because they have a projectile where they can run away and come back in when they feel like it. And that projectile is probably what helps him stay up there for me forever because he has a laser, basically a Falco laser, where he can just pretty much run away whenever he wants. And that's kind of what makes me think that he is still good, but he's not the best in the game. He's just one of the better characters. Now, Azula, I have been crapping on this character, but I will say everybody that plays her now plays her like a coward. And I think that that's why she's still really good to me. And it's no longer in the bottom of A tier to me in my eyes. I played a lot of Azulas and every single one of them is really frustrating to play against because all of them just run away and throw out a move or they run away and throw out something. They shield camp and then they sit and wait for you to mess up and then out of shield you. That's kind of what they have been doing. They've kind of been adapting in a different way than her nerfs had made her play. So she's definitely better than I thought after the nerfs, but they keep nerfing her. They just nerfed her up special. So it's not to say that she's better because of these nerfs. Like she's definitely getting worse because of the nerfs, but the players who are playing her all play her so cowardly that you can literally run away the entire time and you'll be at the last minute and you'll finally be able to get a lead on her because they all run away. None of them have been aggro enough anymore because they got a lot of nerfs, obviously. Edge guarding them is really easy. Vertically, it's a little worse for her. So she still is in the A tier, just a little bit higher up just because I've seen a lot of them play the runaway game and not a whole lot of thinking, just kind of throwing out the same moves that she's always had good moves before. And now they are just not getting as punished as they were in the past. She's still a good character. And I always said that, but I will say that you have to play her like a coward now. You can't really just go in whenever you feel like it. And you can't really make any reads like you used to. You just got to play really safe. And that's what's annoying about her. And that's kind of what lands her in the top of A. Now, Donatello, I do think that he's better than these other two characters, but I am worried about him because they aren't really doing anything for him. He is slow still, and he isn't bad by any means. But the thing is that he is going to be worse than a lot of other characters that can just rush him down. He cannot deal with the rush. And if somebody rushes him down, the only thing that's going to save him are his Sephiroth Giganto moves that like if you just shield and run in and shield on him, he can't do anything about it. And if you also break his little teleporting smoke, he can't do anything about that either because his recovery is not the best. Now, I will say his out of shield is pretty good because he's got like a cloud up special. So he can kind of just out shield you or out of shield you and shield camp sort of like Azula's can where they just can kind of sit there and throw out moves after you're done with your turn. But the thing is, is that Donatello can also just make a guessing game and just guess you to death. He can kind of just do what he wants and play a little tricky, but you know what they're going to do. They're very predictable. You know they're going to throw out a big move. They're going to throw out their B-reverse. You know what I mean? They're going to throw out their special. They're just going to throw out things to try to throw you off. When in reality, they're playing a stick shift character. And that's kind of what they do. They play in stick shift. And if you can get in there and grind the gears, they're not going to be able to do as much as you think. So if you aren't scared of them, they aren't as good. But if you are scared of them, <laughs> they would be S tier. Now, Rocco did get his stuff changed. Rocco got his moves changed a little bit where his recovery is a little bit worse, but slash better. So you can't hit on the way up but at the same token like it is a little bit different than it was i still think he's stupid because he does run away a lot in camp and he can kind of play without a brain and get away with it half the time as long as he punishes your landing he can really do what he wants a lot of them will throw and do the same exact thing like throwing down his little bowling ball in the air air dodging away throwing out all his projectiles and then praying that's kind of what all of them do and if they get you on a flat map that's what they hope for is to just keep you at bay and then punish your landing and that's kind of what that character is. He was way better when he had his multiple jackhammers and I'm thankful that they are gone because Spunky on even one of those in, in the mix of two other jackhammers was ridiculous to deal with and plus the health bar on those was kind of stupid. But now they kind of die whenever you hit them and you kind of don't have to think about him as much. As long as you rush him down and don't let him get a footing on the ground and don't let him set up shop, you should be good. It's like him and Jimmy are like the two characters that are like puppeteer masters that can really change the face of the game if somebody really good had a hold on them. But a lot of Rocco's play the runaway game. Not as cowardly as Azula, but definitely plays like a runaway character because they have to run away because not all of their moves are going to kill you until they get to high percent. Patrick, I think Patrick is still stupid. If anything, the only reason why he's underneath Rocco is because he cannot deal with what Rocco is going to put down, right? Every character is sort of like listed in a way where they can all deal with people who are below them, right? And it's a little bit harder for the ones above them. And I will say that Patrick, he's a grappler at heart. He wants to grab you. He's going to kill you at the moment he gets you because he can do his little Patrick suicide move where he just dies with you in his arms and wins sort of like how plankton can which is also broken and it shouldn't work that way but i still think with that in being in the game it's really dumb so like you can never have a comfortable lead if he ever gets you off the map off of the down special or whatever that grab is you just die and you lose so you really have to be careful against him regardless of what character 
tier you're in, you have to be scared of him, essentially. He has the ability to have a comeback whenever he feels like it. And these nerfs and changes and whatever haven't really affected him like I thought they would. He's still really strong. He's still really good. If you really want to play somebody fun and kind of dopey, it's definitely Patrick because you kind of just grab, grab, grab and not think about it, right? Or you use a lot of insane aerials and grounded smash attacks that are really strong and can kill really early still. Now, obviously, I think Nigel sucks. I don't, I always say that he's kind of just the worst character in the game and I kind of feel bad because he shouldn't be the worst because there are some setups that he can do still with his rest move, aka his smashing move. But the same token is that he does have trouble not dying. He is a very light character. He's a jigglypuff of this game. He's got four jumps, which is great, but his up special sucks. They barely change again how his up special works. They're not doing too much. It's a little too, little too late. He's never really going to be in the meta if he's not played a certain way. You have to play this character really, really, really runaway style, or you have to play for your setups, and there's not a whole lot he can really do if somebody just wants to run away from the entire game. He has no range, no projectiles. He can run away, sure, himself, but the same token is that he can get messed up real bad. He dies at like 70, guys. To anything meaningful like a smash attack, he will die, which is insane. So you have to be smart about your cancels. You have to be smart about your bursting because he really is a character that is going to reward you if you're really good at playing that style, the runaway camping, cowardly style. But the same token is that if you do do that with him, it's going to be long games every game. Every game you play with him is going to be hard because you have to go for openings that are guaranteed essentially. And in your disadvantage is pretty good because you have those jumps. But in the same token, if somebody just meets you up there, you die because you're so light. So it's a really risky game for him. I think they need to either jump up his weight or they need to fix something about him, make him a little faster with some of his moves. If he had a Jigglypuff back air like she has in melee, it would not matter. He wouldn't care. He would just spam that move and he'd be fine. But the fact is he doesn't have a move like that that he can just throw out over and over and over again and create his own zoning space because he has no projectile. With that being said, he is a C tier to me and I hope they fix him some more in the future. It's not like they're going in the wrong direction with him, but they need to do more. Ren and Stimpy. I think they are ridiculous. If anything, these characters are the characters that I have an issue with in ranks because I know it's going to be a slog. I'm either going to beat them up or they're going to get me very, very low to an inch of my life and I might lose. They are monsters. Ren and Stimpy are insane. They have some guaranteed follow-ups that they can do out of slime cancels and they have some really scary things they can do that puts you in a bad position a lot. There's a lot of things that they can just like kind of not think about and not have to really worry about and that's kind of what makes them that good for me. But in the same token, if they do get rushed down and if you do not let them breathe, even though they have the ridiculousness of the car, the car is still not as good as it used to be because you can't just spam it anymore. So they have to be respected, but you can also disrespect them at certain points of the game. And if you know how to do that, you can really stop them from taking over, but it's a, it's a slog every time and it's really hard to deal with. Now, everybody always keeps saying, oh, Aang keeps getting messed with. Oh, they keep nerfing Aang. He has three jumps, guys. Three jumps is stupid. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's no characters in any of the games that just has three jumps. Usually it's like four to six, but not three. So he just has an extra jump to follow up and kill you at any point that he wants. He can even up special to the sky and then jump twice. That's ridiculous. So I think that if we keep that in mind, you'll understand why I think he's so good. It's him, Danny, and these other characters that are in the S tier that I think are actually ranked demons. If you run into these characters in ranked or you run into these characters in a bracket, it's going to be a hard time because they're either going to damage burst you or they can run away just a little bit and be out of your range just a little bit to bother you enough to keep trying to engage. Now, if you have a lead on these characters and force them to engage, their engage is not as great. Like Aang's engage is pretty good, but at the same token, he has to kind of do a risky setup if he's not using his needles. He's got like a chic move, obviously like the needles I said, and he's got a little dive, but they made it dive a little bit worse, though I don't think it's going to change him that much. Moving on to Squidward, I think the difference between a lot of these characters for me is that SpongeBob characters are all very close to each other. The reason why he's right here in the middle of A is because Squidward is a good character at heart. He has a lot of things that are ridiculous about him and his explosion on his up special where he hits you and he can keep following up is ridiculous. He has a lot of things going for him, especially that clarinet not being able to be stopped. Like the clarinet is so fast sometimes, especially if you empower it and it has such big priority that you have to not only time it insanely well, but you either have to eat it, dodge it, shield it, or run away from it. There's nothing to do. That thing takes up the whole screen and it goes far. So he can just completely shut out a part of the screen from you and he'll force you to jump or he'll force you to shield. And that's kind of one of the things I think that really makes him really good is that exact notion right there that he can force you into situations that are hard to either 50 50 or if you guess wrong you can get a huge percent difference between you two because he can just smack you up the same can be said about spongebob i think spongebob is a little bit worse just because he has stubby range he's the mario of this game him being an a tier is not really that crazy of a thing i kind of want to put him higher obviously but i can't justify it knowing that every character just outranges him or runs away from him.
from him and you have to combo so specifically and so perfectly sometimes at certain parts of the combo you have to sort of pinch it off and kind of just oh i can't go for more i have to wait that's kind of the mario problem where like you can edge guard you can do all these things but you have to respect when your combo's supposed to end or if the combo ends early you have to follow up in a different way that's kind of what i think with spongebob i think that he is definitely a character that has to respect people and respect characters a little bit more than other characters have to because his range is so stubby but at the same token he's not a bad character at any degree and if they made him bad it wouldn't be good look for nickelodeon so he's definitely always going to be middle of the pack or maybe s tier but we'll have to see what they do to him in the future i think he's still really good now Raphael, i think is better just because of the fact that he still can do all of these annoying things he still can run away he still can kind of pseudo camp and engage when he needs to and his recovery is actually pretty good despite the up special not being that great i will say that he can follow up in ways that are unique to him only and his back air is still really juicy and disgusting and his engage is what i like about him the fact that he can run in onto you is interesting and a lot of characters he can kind of just run into and just run him over a little bit and i will say the reason why he's right here is because he can kind of not respect some characters and kind of just like run away with the game but in the same token he has to respect a lot of the characters above him because he has to actually have a game plan when engaging with them otherwise they kind of just run away with the lead and he can't do anything because his range is so short that if he lets them have the lead and he starts to try to only engage and not bait anything it's going to be really hard for him to stay he has good staying power to a degree but also he has bad range so that's what makes him right here for me now i do not like cora and i think it has been very very much said i think that she's ridiculous do i know where i'm going to put her really not so much i don't know if she's right up here or if she's a little bit lower than like reptar and, Re and ren and simpy but i will say cora is ridiculous she has the same thing i was saying about it i don't know what it is with a lot of the avatar characters but if you play like a coward you can kind of do whatever you want if you run away with any of the avatar characters it's a lot harder to deal with them specifically because of cora can just run away and do an aerial while she's coming back in with her side special her little flame hop that she does when she jumps out she hits you out of the recovery from the side special she has some ridiculous options that she can do i've been playing her and i've just been noticing how i just randomly will kill people on accident without even thinking it will kill because the nair she has is so strong for no reason her combos and follow-ups are ridiculous and i think that the more that you play her the more you guys can realize like dang this character really can do whatever she wants especially with some unique things like her down smash in the air her down charge it really can be used to cancel and her off ledge is actually not as bad as i thought it was but the fact is that her up special still kind of sucks so if they don't have a slime cancel or a way to empower it they will not come back and a lot of times they just die and that's her only weakness really she's kind of going to be able to be doing whatever she wants she can rush you down she can run away she can engage when she wants her grabs a little bit longer than everybody else's for some reason that's what makes her so difficult to deal with i feel like that's one of the things that i think that she's ridiculous about is that she really is strong you just got to play her in bursts like i said a stick shift character now last but not least the demons themselves the angry beavers i think that they are another duo that is ridiculous they're probably better than these characters right here and probably under cora just because she runs away so much that it's kind of hard for them to deal with i still think they're really good obviously i think that they're one of the best characters in the game i think they're probably higher than this at high level high level because they really are ridiculous but at the same token they are hard to play and if you mess up one time you kind of can get exploded but the thing is too about them they just got their stuff changed a little bit with how their things react and norbert got his recovery a little bit better his vertical is a little bit better so i think that with this patch 1.5 changing things up a little bit it helps keep them in the meta keeps them a little bit fresh for the people who are playing beavers and i think that the characters that are on this list right here are probably where they stand in general maybe it can be not i think it's order to a degree though i will say some of them are more ambiguous and vague than others because i can't necessarily tell you a perfect spot where they belong i haven't broken down the matchups and all this other stuff that i want to do but in the future i feel like we can definitely do that if that's something you're interested in seeing soldier let me know in the comments below and obviously patch 2.15 is coming out soon on february 15th so i am excited for that and i really want to see who where mr Krabs is going to land i'm hoping he lands somewhere between april o'neill and cora that's where i want him to be is in the s tier and you guys are going to know i'm going to be spamming him a lot so if you guys want to be part of the mayhem make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button so you guys can see what i'm doing in the future join my discord as well if you haven't already if you want to be part of future streams and be a part of some private games that we host sometimes in our discord every gosh darn week soldier we're going to be live streaming everything we do and i'll see you next time in the next video soldier goodbye Ooh. we ride